My name is Amanda Jones, and my training tip for you is a tunnel break. I use a tunnel break when I want my dog to turn immediately upon exiting the tunnel. So whatever side of the tunnel I am on, when my dog goes into the tunnel, that's the side of the tunnel I expect my dog to turn to. When first teaching the tunnel break, I want to set my dog up for success by making it a little bit easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn the tunnel slightly in the direction that I expect my dog to turn to upon exiting the tunnel. This sets him up for success because he's already going to be on the correct lead um, when coming out of that tunnel because of the curve of the tunnel. Another way I'm going to set my dog up for success when first learning this exercise is to use a target. For my dogs, I use a toy target. You can also use a food target. Either one works, it's fine. So the first time doing this exercise, with the tunnel being curved, I'm going to put my toy target out in front of the tunnel and to the side I want my dog to turn. My dog can see this toy when he's still in the tunnel thereby helping him turn to the correct side upon exiting the tunnel. The next time through, I'm gonna put the toy at the level of the exit of the tunnel so he can't see it until his head comes out of the tunnel. The last time we do the exercise, I'm gonna put the toy behind the opening of the tunnel. So now my dog has to turn upon exiting the tunnel without seeing that toy. So the next step would be to move the tunnel slightly so it's a little bit less curved. So when I move the tunnel and make it a little bit harder for my dog, I'm again gonna start over and put the toy out front so that he can have success doing the exercise when the tunnel position has made it a little bit more difficult. And then I'm going to move my toy back, just like the first iteration, until it's behind the exit of the tunnel and my dog is coming out and turning on his own without seeing the toy. So then the final step would be doing this exercise on a straight tunnel. So again, because we've made it more difficult, I'm gonna put my toy target out front so when my dog comes through the tunnel, he can see the toy and turn to the correct side. And then I would gradually move the toy back, just like we did before, until the toy is behind the tunnel and he's turning upon exiting the tunnel without seeing the toy. So when you're first training your dog to do the tunnel break, make sure that you don't put an obstacle out beyond the exit of the tunnel. You wanna make sure that your dog is set up for success and to be able to turn upon exiting the tunnel without seeing something that might draw him to go forward instead of making that turn. So there are a few cues that I use to tell my dog that I want him to do a tunnel break. The first is a verbal cue. I always say tunnel when I want my dog to go into a tunnel, but now I'm gonna add the word break. So I will say tunnel break when my dog is at least two or three feet from the opening of the tunnel. I can also put my hand out to the side in a braking motion to also give him a visual cue that I want him to do a tunnel break. So at the same time that I'm sending my dog in the tunnel and I'm saying tunnel break, I'm putting my hand out to the side. Now I don't necessarily have to be right in front of my dog putting my hand in front of his face. I can be lateral putting my hand out to my side. My dog can still see that as a visual cue. The other thing I'm gonna do is to change my motion. When I send my dog into the tunnel, I'm gonna slow down or even stop before he goes into that tunnel. And again, that tells him that I want him to turn when he comes out of the tunnel. So I'm gonna to try to put all those cues together to give my dog the best information possible, again, before he goes into the tunnel. So you'll see in the demos, when I first start training this with punk the tunnel is going to be curved and i'm also going to send him to the tunnel 
with very little motion. The only thing I'm going to do is to step forward with one foot. Once he's gone through the whole sequence and the tunnel is straight, then I'm going to start adding some motion. And I will send him over the jump and into the tunnel. The last thing that we will do is I will pick up the toy, I will send him in the tunnel with motion, and then expect him to turn and take this jump after exiting the tunnel. So that kind of puts the whole thing into a real world scenario. You want him to do something after turning out of the tunnel, and in this case we're going to take a jump. <laughs>